Hi there. Welcome to 13th video of this series which is around transition of LIBOR where LIBOR will no longer be valid and a new reference rate will be replacing LIBOR. In this video we will cover what are interbank offered rates, what is or was LIBOR, then the utility of LIBOR and its administration. So we will cover the recent changes which happened to LIBOR after the LIBOR scandal and even after that why there was a need of a new rate which is supposed to replace LIBOR. We will cover the details around the new rates which are also called RFRs or risk free reference rates and why are these rates better than LIBOR. Now starting with the introduction into what are interbank offered rates or IBORs. Basically an interbank offered rate is a rate which is used as a reference by the banks when they lend money to each other. Different markets and currencies have different reference rates or IBORs. For example, for Euro there is Euribor. Then in India there is MIBOR which is Mumbai Interbank Offered Rate. In UK or even in US there is a London Interbank Offered Rate. And there is Ionia which is Euro Overnight Index Average. And many other similar reference rates. Of all these benchmark rates, our focus is on LIBOR which is London Interbank Offered Rate and we will also explain why it is transitioning into new rates in further slides. Now first what is LIBOR, its utility and administration. LIBOR is a benchmark rate which is calculated on a daily basis as an average of rates submitted by a panel of banks in UK. Now the utility. LIBOR is currently used as a benchmark rate to borrow unsecured money in five different currencies which are pound, or sterling, euro, Japanese yen, Swiss franc and US dollar. Also there are seven different tenures for which LIBOR is calculated which is overnight, one week, one, two, three, six or twelve months. Along with this LIBOR is also used around the world to calculate interest rates and valuation of many other financial products as well such as derivatives, bonds, loans and consumer lending products. We have seen interest rate swaps happening on basis of LIBOR in US dollars and pounds as well. Until 2014, LIBOR was administered by British Bankers Association. But after LIBOR scandal broke out, the administration was changed in 2014 to Intercontinental Exchange from British Bankers Association. We will tell more about LIBOR scandal in next slide. For a very long time LIBOR has been calculated as an average of the rates submitted by the participant banks to BBA. All the participant banks used to submit these rates based on the expert judgment. LIBOR scandal broke out when it was found that these participating banks were colluding with each other and submitting false rates. They were either inflating the rates or deflating the rates to make profit from the underlying trades. After the LIBOR scandal broke out, the administration of LIBOR was then transferred from British Bankers Association to Intercontinental Exchange in year 2014. Now the LIBOR rate submission by the participating bank should be based on actual interbank deposit market transactions and these transactions should be recorded as well instead of the earlier way of expert judgment which participant banks were using earlier to submit their rates. Along with that the LIBOR rate submitted by each bank now needs to be made public after 3 months of submission. Although it was expected that banks will now submit the rates based on the transaction data. However, due to regulatory measures post 2008, the transactions in short term money markets have reduced drastically, making it very difficult for the banks to base the LIBOR on the transaction data. So the participant banks have no option but to still use expert judgment wherever the underlying transaction data is not robust. LIBOR scandal forced the regulators globally to find out alternative to the LIBOR and similar other benchmark rates. Global regulators formed currency specific working groups 
which are working on the alternative benchmark solutions which will replace the existing LIBOR and EURIBOR for various currencies. These currency specific working groups have members like banks and asset managers, insurance companies and corporates. Along with these, other public entities are also involved. These currency specific working groups have identified the alternative rates which will replace the specific LIBOR currencies. We will cover that in next slide. Contrary to LIBOR, these alternative rates will be based upon overnight transactions and hence are being called risk-free rates or risk-free reference rates RFRs. Apart from the RFRs being discussed, there are other alternative rates as well which are currently being used. For example, the Bank of England rate is being used for mortgages because of the transparency around these rates. As in below table are the currency specific alternative rates which the working groups have identified. As we see, LIBOR USD will be replaced by SOFR which is Secured Overnight Financing Rate. LIBOR or EURIBOR for currency as Euro will be replaced by EUROSTAR or ESTR. LIBOR for Sterling is being replaced by SONIA which is Sterling Overnight Index Average. LIBOR for Japanese Yen is being replaced by TONA which is Tokyo Overnight Average. LIBOR for Swiss Francs is being replaced by SARON which is Swiss Average Rate Overnight. Current timeline is to replace the LIBOR in all the currencies with these currency specific reference rates by year 2021. Now coming to why and how these RFRs are better than current existing LIBOR currency rates. As we know different working groups have been created for currency specific RFRs and there will be separate administrators for each RFR compared to only one which is intercontinental exchange for all the LIBORs. Currently, all the RFRs are overnight rates based on the overnight transaction data instead of long term like 3 or 6 months which creates a risk of deviation. As we saw earlier, the LIBOR rates based on underlying overnight transactions were difficult to calculate because of missing robust data. However, the RFR rates are based on higher volume of transactional data from the underlying indices. As RFRs or risk-free rates are based on overnight transaction data rather than expert judgment which was there in case of LIBORs, it is less prone to manual manipulations as we saw happened during LIBOR scandal. Currently all the LIBOR rates are unsecured means there is no collateral attached to the said transactions. While out of 5, 2 of the RFRs have selected a secured or collateralized rates for their respective currencies based on transactions in their respective government security repo market which makes those 2 RFRs more secure. Although transition to these RFRs is a welcome move from both regulatory and risk mitigation perspective, we can only hope that this will improve the confidence of investors in today's volatile market. In case any one of you are interested in FX trading, then we have partnered with TO Markets as our FX partner. You can find the link to register in our bio and in description of this video as well. TO Markets UK is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority FCA UK. Also a good thing is that you can also transact into TO Markets with cryptocurrencies. We have come to the end of this video. So if you like our video, don't forget to share. You can also subscribe our YouTube channel, which is Capital Markets Easy. Or you can drop us your queries on our email that is capitalmarketseasy at gmail.com. No spaces, please. Hope you like these videos. Keep on sending back your queries. Thank you.